Hi, I'm Dana Smiles with the Cape Cod Institute, and I'm here with Bob Anderson, who is teaching his course this week, Conscious Leadership, a Unified Model. How many summers have you been teaching at the Cape Cod Institute? It's our fourth year here. It's been a great run. That's wonderful. So what do you like most about this type of teaching and learning environment? Well, I love that it's a half day and then I can go be with my wife and have, you know, time at the beach and a wonderful dinner and get up in the morning, meditate and come here and teach. And the groups have been great, uh, very receptive and dive right in, play full out. So uh, I look forward to it, actually. That's wonderful. So can you tell us a little bit more about the course that you're teaching this week? Yeah, I created um, what we call a unified model of leadership um, or a universal model of leadership, mm -hmm. which is a really arrogant thing to say. And I don't mean that it's universal in the sense that it encompasses everything. What I've really spent my whole life doing is integrating the field of leadership development and, and psychology and social sciences that play into the leadership field. And how do all these various theories and frameworks, research, come together in a much more elaborate, complex, dynamic, model, which is based on um, stages of adult development or consciousness evolution um, as a, one of the integrating frames. And so it's a, how do you lead more consciously and develop into a more and more conscious and effective leader? And what are the, what's the model for that? We have an assessment that we use in here. And then what are the practices that if I employ them, evolve my leadership? Hmm, that's really interesting. Are there any highlights or special moments, either in or out of the classroom, that have come to mind for you this week so far? Well, we've had a lot of them. Um, the group's been very, very responsive. We had quite a th session yesterday. Uh, one of the practices is how do you get underneath your a reactive pattern hmm. of model as uh, part of the model is a reactive orientation or mindset and a creative, a reactive and creative. And Reactors run by fear and you run behaviors that actually are self-limiting and so on. So how do you get underneath, or catch yourself in the act of that and get underneath it deeply enough to see and unravel the core assumption, core belief that's running that whole pattern. Mm -hmm. And it usually cuts to some way we form our identity. Mm -hmm. I, I am my ideas. My ideas define me. Or... I am my relationships. If people don't accept me, love me, appreciate me, I don't exist. Mm -hmm. We had a moment yesterday in front of the group where I do a demonstration and somebody stepped right into that and just really went to the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. And it's really quite powerful and liberating and to watch that happen, for the whole group to watch that mm -hmm. liberation actually happen. You can see it in her face and her body mm -hmm. and she got clear that the whole pattern of her life had been an illusion. Wow. So who do you think would benefit most from this type of experience? Uh, leaders. Um, people in leadership. We have that in the room. We have uh, consultants, coaches, therapists, and people who just want to take their life to the next level. Uh, so it's a, this was a, this is, it's focused on leadership and the model is built around leadership and that's our client, but the work is universal. The work is what it takes to really evolve one's humanity, if you will. So anybody can take it. So after the participants leave the classroom, are there any key takeaways that you really hope they bring home with them? Uh, I hope they take away some practices, hmm. some key insight into here's how I, show up in the world, it's not how I am, not who I am, mm -hmm. not fully who I am, and then some practices for evolving that into becoming more of who I am. So, um, want them to walk away and get that there is a practice of stalking their longing, mm -hmm. of discerning what matters most and what I'm here to do with this, at least this phase of my life, if not my life, ability to crystallize that into a vision of practical, like here's the, here's what I'm actually going to create, an organization, life, work, next, in order to embody that or manifest that, and then 
capacity to listen intuitively. You don't do that just rationally, so how do I listen intuitively to what seems to want to come through me? Um, how do I get in my own way, and how do I get underneath that deeply enough so that I can free up for what wants to come through? Mm -hmm. And then as I engage, the final practice is how do I engage authentically so that I'm embodying in every conversation what I'm choosing to create. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. That's fascinating. So what about your work are you most excited right now? Well, we have the second book coming out. We're calling it Leadership at Scale. We did a first book was Mastering Leadership, um, where we laid out this whole universal model and assessment on this book. In this book, we um, did a research study on uh, our written comments. So we're asking how do senior, we started a de uh, database, we got about a million and a half surveys. So we started, we started it for senior leaders in substantial organizations, and sub substantial positions, and said, how did these leaders give feedback to each other? Mm. So if I'm giving feedback to you, it's what are you doing that's working and not working? And what do they say to each other actually? Mm. And it just uh, rocked us, the clarity with which they see see me as a leader. The feed, I'm swimming in a feedback-rich environment, and uh, maybe or maybe not using that feedback. And so there's all kinds of uh, very interesting things, and it started to really work us on what kind of leadership scales, the kind of leadership that we need in order to create the organizations that can thrive in the kind of complexities we're in now. Um, it's becoming increasingly complex. Uh, business environment and so leadership is challenged to scale mm. not just the organization to scale but how do you scale the kind of leadership that can scale innovation scale agility scale adaptability in an organization and increase the capacity and capability of the organization to create its future how do you scale that mm -hmm. and uh, what kind of leadership scales well and what kind has built-in limits to scale that's really interesting it's important work, so thank you so much for You're taking welcome. the time to speak with me today. You're welcome.